Pastor Liddell, Pastor Tanya, great friends of ours. We met Pastor Liddell uh, in 1999 when we were in Bible college. I met uh, Jennifer in Bible college, man. God bless my heart. I found the woman of my dreams at World Harvest Bridal College. I don't know if you caught that or not. It was Bible and Bridal College, I think. You know, we found, we, you found your lady there too, didn't you? Amen. And so we became friends way back in the day. And Pastor Liddell, Pastor Tanya, they pastor an incredible church in Tampa. I said earlier, man, they're really suffering down there in the weather on the west coast of Florida and Tampa area. Uh, but, man, we're so blessed. They, they left their church this weekend to come to Columbia, Missouri to bless us. And to minister to us. Amen. We, we honor you. We love you guys. It's a joy. Come on up here. Come on up here. Let's give Pastor Liddell a great DPC welcome this morning. They're bringing your mic. Remain standing. He's going to bless us today. Amen. Amen. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord, Destiny Point Church? Oh, come on, that was weak. I said, are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen, amen. Listen, it's an extreme honor to be here with you guys. Um, and as Pastor Josh said, man, we go way back. And um, I'm so excited to be able to have good friends in my life. Well, 20 plus years I've known him, and um, he's always been the same. And uh, we thank God for him. Can we thank God for your pastor, Pastor Josh Palmer? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to sing a little bit for you, if that's okay. Um, this first song that I'm going to sing is called I Am Free. How many free folks we have in the house? Listen, this song was given by request, special request. Uh, Pastor Jennifer Palmer, she said, listen, I have a request. When you come, can you do this song for me? And I said, absolutely, I will. And the backdrop of it, I wrote this song. Um, a while ago, and um, I'm actually getting ready to redo it again on my new project that's getting ready to come out. So you guys are getting ready to hear the redoing of it for the very first time today. Look at somebody say, you favored. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So let's go ahead and worship the Lord in this house. Amen. Let's lift our hands before the Lord, and we're going to sing this song today, I Am Free. Yes, Lord, in the monitors. Oh, you came to rescue me. Open my eyes so I can see. You made a change. You made a change in me. Now I'm free, yeah. I am free, I am free. Any free folks today? I am free, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I am free, I am free. You gave it all. I am free. If you're free, come on, make some noise right there. Oh, 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 oh. This is my part right here. He broke my chains. He healed my pain. Has he ever did that for you? All my sins. What did he do? He washed them away. Hallelujah. He bled and died. He paid the price for me, now I know it's official. Come on, hands up all over the room. I am free. That's all you say. Come on. I am free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me, for saving me. I am free. That's it. Come on, church. I am free. You gave it all. You gave it Think about it. <laughs> hey, for saving me. Hey, I am, I am, I am free. Yes, I am. 
you gave it all for me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Somebody lift those hands and cry. Oh, come on, I feel the anointing in here. your pain, through your guilt and your shame, from your past into your present. You ought to lift your hands, DPC, and cry out, I am free. Come on. That's it. Come on. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I am, I am free. Come on, wave those hands in the atmosphere. You gave it all. Years ago, way back on Calvary. Yeah, 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 yeah. You broke the chains that was binding me. You broke the chains that was binding me. You broke the chains, God. You broke the chains, God. Hey, you gave it all. Come on, I need to see the free folks in the house. Lift those hands. That's it. You gave it all. Ooh, hallelujah. I feel the glory. You gave it all. You didn't have to do it, but you did. You didn't have to do it, but you did. We're so grateful. We're so thankful. With hands, we lift them up. And we sought our freedom in the place. I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, what the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. There is freedom. We're free to worship him because you're not guilty. He took the charge for you. You're not guilty. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, hands lifted all over the room and declare, I am free. Hallelujah. I'm free today. I'm free in Jesus, whom the Son sets free. It's free in me. I am free. Oh, 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 I am free. Come on, make some noise in this place if you're free. Come on, make some noise in this place if you're free. You know, what's amazing about that song and why I sing it with so much passion, many people don't know that I ain't always been saved. Come on, somebody. I actually wrote that song from a jail cell. The Spirit of the Lord met me in the jail cell. Come on, somebody, not in the church house. Hello, somebody. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. He's in the jail. Come on, he's in the hospital. Come on, he's down your neighborhood. Ah, come on, somebody. Hey, where the spirit of the Lord is. Hallelujah. We're free. And when you're free, the blessing comes with it. Come on, the favor of the Lord rests upon you when you're free. Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got good gospel news for you today. Tell him, say, this is my year of favor. If you believe it, shout in this place. This next song is a single that I just released last year. And the backdrop of this story is it was 13 years ago when I first wrote my first album, my first project. And then my wife, my beautiful, lovely wife and I, we planted a church in Tampa, Florida in 2015. And when we started planting the church, man, we was grinding. We was building. And I just really didn't record no more during that time. But then last year, the Lord began to speak to me. He said, Liddell, it's time for you to get back into the studio. And I said, wait a minute now, I don't know about all that. 
it's been 13 years, right? I was afraid. I was afraid. I said, nobody going to want to hear me. I ain't going to be relevant no more, right? But I thank God for a good wife. Hello, somebody. Pastor Tanya Stubbs Cole. Amen. She said, if God told you to do it, you better get in that studio and do it. Come on, how many husbands in here are glad for a good wife? Amen. Amen. So I listen to Jesus and I listen to my wife. Amen. I ain't stupid. And <laughs> because I broke that spirit of fear, I just want to testify that I just released a song last year, My Year of Favor. It's already been Grammy considered. It's already hit the top 100 billboard charts. Top 30 on the gospel internet radio station. Come on, somebody. And on our way here, I got news that it hit the number one on Spotify on K-Sound Music Project. All because we obey God. So you may be delayed, my friend, but you are not denied. Let's play my year of favor. Come on, lift those hands and make some noise in here because I feel the Holy Ghost. My year of favor. Come on, I need some worshipers right here. Come on, lift those hands all over the room. That's it. Come on, we're going to declare that today here at Destiny Point Church. It's my year of faith. Song says, Sometimes in life, things may not always work out right. You're crying. You're crying. And sometimes you're praying. Just to make it Just through the night. Through oh, yeah, I've been there. The but hold on. It it's going to work, work out. out. Yes, it will. Because this, this is my year of faith. faith. That's your place right there to shout. This is my year. This is my year. Ooh. To get, up. to get up, but sometimes you get knocked Only back down again. Back have you ever been there? I know I have, but I got good news. Hold on, it it's gonna work out. Yes, it will. Because this is my, this is my year. Come on, make that declaration. Point to yourself and make the devil mad. This is my year. This is my year. Oh. the glory of here today. Come on. Sometimes the pain, it gets hard. And you may just lost your job. But I came to encourage you today, my brother and my sister. You know what that is? This is what I want you to do today. Hold on. Stand strong. And stand on the word of God. Because I can hear the tides turning for you. Uh-huh. Yeah, I can hear the tides turning for you. And it's turning in your favor, brother. Yes, it is. Listen, trouble ain't gonna last always. Weeping may endure for the night. I said weeping may endure for the night. But trouble, trouble, trouble ain't gonna last always. Do I got a witness in the building? Uh -huh. Lift your hands and declare. It's my year. It's my year. You gotta believe it today. This is my year. Every door will be open. Every contract is gonna be signed. Yes, it will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I turn around, he keeps on, he keeps on making a way for me. Over and 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 over again. Somebody make some noise. Just wave it, come on. Let's make the world know this is my year. It's my year. Come on, shout it out. This is my year of favor. Come on, make some noise right there. Come on, high five your neighbor and say, This is my year. 
Come on, sometimes you just gotta let the world know, this is my year. I don't care what happened last year. I don't even care what happened last month. I don't even care what happened this week. Right now, I said right now, this is my year. Come on, the power of life and death lies within the tongue. I believe if you speak it into the atmosphere, it can manifest right where you are. I don't care what your situation looks like. I don't care what it looked like last week. I'm telling you, if you declare it out of your mouth, this is my year. This is my year. This is my... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we just worship that God right now? Come on. I feel the glory in this place as they bring that pulpit. Come on, lift those hands all over this room. Somebody needs to declare that in their atmosphere. This is my year of favor. Hallelujah. 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 Well, on your way down to your seat, I want you to go find three people, three people, and tell them this is your year of favor. Go ahead and encourage them. Go ahead and encourage somebody and tell them. Say, this is your year of favor. A little bit more in the monitor. In the monitors, floors. Did y'all like those songs? Hallelujah. Listen, what God is doing is great. We're so excited about all that he's doing. We, my wife and I, we brought a few product with us. And um, we got a CD, My Year of Favor, we brought that. And uh, we brought a t-shirt that says My Year of Favor on it. So you can be able to wear it everywhere you go. Hey man, you're gonna be down Publix, down that shopping aisle. You, people gonna say, where, where you get that shirt from? Listen, all you need to know is my year of favor. Come on, you ain't even got to say nothing. The shirt is gonna do the talking for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey Amen. And listen, my wife and I will be back there by the table right after service, and uh, we would love to love on you. And uh, I told him in the first service that uh, the CDs are $5 and the t shirts are $20. But, uh, you know, Destiny Point Church, I feel like y'all are family. Amen. You know, I go a lot of places, and they don't feel like family, let me tell you. But the minute I walked in here, you guys are so loving. Amen. I can just feel the love in the atmosphere. Amen. And you already feel like family. So, you know, when, you, when you're family, family gets the family discount. Hello, somebody. So, if you get a t-shirt, you get a CD, you won't be having to pay the regular price. All you got to do is pay $20. That's it. $20 for the shirt and the CD, and we're going to be a blessing to your life. Amen? Amen. Well, listen, we're going to get into the Word of God. Um, so if you have your Bibles, go to Mark chapter 10, verse number 46. And as you turn in there, I just want to say this publicly uh, because we don't get out often to go somewhere on a Sunday, amen, and leave our, our congregation. We do have a, an amazing church in Tampa, Florida. Um, that we started eight years ago, and God is really blessing. It's called Worship United Church. And we're so grateful to be able to pastor um, that great church. But if we're going to leave on a Sunday to go to any church, it's definitely going to be Destiny Point Church. Come on, somebody. <laughs> because you guys got the greatest pastors on this side of heaven. Come on, Pastor Josh. Pastor Jennifer Palmer, we love you, we honor you, we appreciate you, we salute you for the work that you are doing for the kingdom of God. Amen. And I, 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 I shared with him in the first service that I met Pastor Josh and Pastor Jennifer them in 1999 at World Harvest Bible College. Amen. And some of y'all that wants to go to Bible college, you need to go to World Harvest Bible College because that's the place to be. Amen. Amen. And I met him. And, you know, some people that you, you get around, you know, you just can sense the hand of God on their life. And Pastor Josh was that person. The minute I laid my eyes on him, I said, man, the hand of God is on this brother's life. Amen. Not only does he dress nice, you know, you know, dress hip, you know, and stuff like that. You know, everybody can't wear the skinny jeans, you know. No, you know, T-shirts and stuff and make it look at all cool. But this man of God is anointed. He is a prayer warrior. He is, has integrity. Come on, somebody. And listen, Destiny Point Church, you should be proud 
because you have one of the best pastors on this side of heaven, Pastor Josh Palmer. Amen. You got a good pastor. And you treat him right. You treat him right. I told him, I said, listen, I said, if me and my wife wasn't pastoring in Tampa and we lived here in Columbus, Missouri, Columbia, Missouri, this would be our church and they would be our pastors. That's how much we love and honor them. So we appreciate you. And you know, beside every good, uh, every good man, there's a good woman. Amen. Pastor Jennifer Palmer, can we give her a good God bless you? She's so anointed, can sing under the power of the Holy Spirit, and can preach too. We love and honor you. And listen, I saved the best for last. My wife, my boo. My, when I tell them back at uh, Worship United Church, I say, my, my, my sugar on my grits, my gravy on my mashed potatoes. I'm a country boy from Alabama, amen. You know, I like the collard greens and cornbread and fatbacks and all that, you know. Amen. But this woman of God is all of that uh, to me. And she don't get to travel with me often. But when she do, I feel even more favored and blessed. And I am so thankful that God sent this woman of God to me. Can you give my wife a good God bless you, Pastor Tanya Stubbs Cole? Come up here real quick, baby. Come greet the people. My wife is from the Turks and Caicos Islands, and uh, she has a little bit of accent, but I want her to greet you guys real quick. How y'all doing today? <laughs> I'm trying to work on my country accent. <laughs> He's so country. But listen, it is so good to be in the house of the Lord today. The Bible says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, where the Spirit of the Lord is. Let's try that one more time. Where the Spirit of the Lord is. How many of you feel liberated already today? All you have to do is walk in this atmosphere and you will feel the presence of the Lord. People greeting you as you walk through the door. Amen. So we're so grateful for this opportunity. Thank God to your awesome pastors who has opened the door for us to be here. It is such a blessing to be here. And you know, when um, Pastor Liddell told me that God had, he felt it in his spirit to um, take my year of favor. By the way, this is the shirt. He didn't show it to you. I wanted to show it to you real quick. It's a really, really good shirt. So this is the My Year Favorite shirt. Um, when he said God told him to take this on the road and to, um, to just go out and bless the people of God and to remind them that this is their year of favor, I said, man, that is so powerful, babe. I said, you go out and do what God has called you to do. I'm backing you. I'm, I'm backing you. You just go and do what the Lord has anointed and appointed and called you to do. And then he messed up and told me he was going to Destiny Point Church. I said, we will go out and do what God has called us to do. I am with you, baby. Let's go out and take the world. <laughs> so I'm so honored to be here. And thank God again for your amazing pastors and just what God is doing in this house and in your lives. Amen. Tell your neighbor you will never be the same again when you come to Destiny Point Church. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Give it up for my wife again. Isn't she lovely? That's my boo thing. All right, let's get our Bibles. Mark chapter 10, verse number 46. We're going to get in the word of God. There is a word from the Lord. I said there's a word from the Lord. The Lord moved in the first service. Man, we almost didn't get out of here. Man, God did a, a, a mighty work in the first service, and I believe he's going to take us even higher in this service here. Look at your neighbor and say, you've been set up by God. See, you don't even know that you, you just walk right into a setup. Amen. He, been, he set you up to be here today at this particular time. Come on, somebody. So that you can get your breakthrough. Come on, so that you can get your miracle. So you can be delivered. Come on, so that you can get an upgrade. Look at somebody and say, I'm getting ready to get an upgrade today. Woo! I feel it on me up in here, Pastor Josh. All right. Mark chapter 10, verse number 46. If you have it, go ahead and let's stand for the reading of the word, just in honor of God's word. I'm going to be reading from the NIV version. I'm not going to be before you long. Amen. But we're going to be strong. Amen. We ain't going to be long, but we're going to be strong. Amen. <laughs> All right. When you got it, say, I got it. If you need more time, say, hold on, preacher. All right. This preacher will wait on you. 
Amen. <laughs> Amen. Mark chapter 10, verse number 46. We're going to read down to verse number 52. I believe this is the word of the Lord that he wants to speak to us today. Mark chapter 10, verse number 46. I'm going to read it from the NIV version. It says, Then they came to Jericho. And Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city. And a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. Many of the churches are like that, but not at DPC. Come on, somebody. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. Oh, I love that. So they called to the blind man, cheer up, get on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. I want you to help me preach this today and just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I want you to know I got crazy faith. Come on, if you believe that, give God a shout of praise up in here. I got crazy faith. You can take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Crazy faith. The dictionary definition of faith means complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Now, the biblical definition of faith is a belief and trust in God based on evidence but without total proof. Now, crazy faith, now this is the Pastor LC's version, is believing God for the big, even when you can't even see it. Now, the Bible declares in Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1, many of us probably know this verse back from forward because we learned it in Sunday school. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 7 declares, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Romans 10 and 17 declares that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10 and 14 declares towards the end of them verse, it says, how can they hear without a preacher? You need a preacher. You need somebody that can declare the unadulterated word of God. And thank God you got a pastor in the house, Pastor Josh Palmer, that can declare that word that gives you hope and encouragement to go on. Now, this is the thing you got to understand. If, now, this is what the Bible says, if the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, that means that what I hear builds my faith, right? So if my faith can be built on what I hear, then that means my faith can be destroyed by what I hear. You get that? So that means you have to watch what you hear. Amen. You got to watch what you listen to on the news. Amen. Because can I tell you something? The media, they move off of fear. Because that's how they get people to watch. Amen. I, I told them one time we had a hurricane in Tampa, and we have a lot of hurricanes in Tampa. But one time we had a bad hurricane, and CNN was there, not to bash them, but they were there, and they was trying to make the hurricane be worse than what it was. It was really like a tropical storm, but when you turned on CNN, that guy was out there like, whoa, it is windy. Oh, my God, I can't move. I'm about to die. And me and Pastor Tanya sitting in the house like, what is he talking about? Because they move off of fear. But the word of God says, I have not given you the spirit of fear, 
but a power, love, and a sound mind. Just look at somebody and say, my mind is sound. I got a sound mind. Now watch. In this text, God paints a picture of a blind man that cannot see, but he can hear. Isn't that powerful? And I can tell you something. Uh, my wife will tell you we have four children, and we have two sons and two daughters. And one of our sons named Jaden, he's 12 years old. He deals with food allergies. And he can't eat nuts. You know, he can't have dairy. Um, and we have to always watch what uh, he eats. But it's amazing that when you have a, a, a deficiency in an area, we notice how sensitive Jaden is. He's very sensitive. He's very loving, very kind because he has a deficiency. And it's almost kind of like when one of your senses is deficient, it's like the other sense gets very keen. It's very sensitive. So I can imagine blind Bartimaeus, he had a sensitive ear in the spirit because he couldn't see. Come on, somebody. And this is what the church has to get to because we have to have a sensitive ear to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. And in this text, God paints this picture of a blind man. But now here it is. The man is not just blind. The man is a beggar. Come on, he, he, he has a double whammy. So he's not only blind, but he broke. Come on, somebody. He's begging. The Bible picks up in Mark chapter 10, verse 46. It says, then they came to Jericho, and Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city. In other words, Jesus wasn't even thinking about the blind man. He was on his way to Jerusalem to be crucified. He was leaving out the city, but then this blind man here, son of Atimius, was sitting by the roadside begging. So I don't want you to miss this. This man is not only blind, but he's a beggar. Bartimaeus' name means, in the son of Timaeus, in Aramaic, it means the son of the unclean. And we know in Scripture, when someone was labeled unclean, they were treated differently. They were oftentimes marginalized because of their situation. Not only was this man blind, but he was a beggar, which means that he had no home. He had no food, and he had no security. Picture blind Bartimaeus as he has this clear identity in Jericho community because they know who he is. They see him every day out there blind, begging, but he was a beggar that can beg, but he is not to cry out and bother people, especially rabbis. Because in that community, when you had an identity of, of a, a blind beggar, you wasn't supposed to beg. You wasn't supposed to look out and try to reach out to rabbis. It wasn't, it wasn't so popular to do that. So watch this. Oftentimes, our identity is based on our social relationships. Because Bartimaeus' relationships was based on him being the one receiving assistance and speaking when spoken to, not speaking out. Isn't it amazing how society can label you based off of your situation? And then you begin to form an identity from what people call you. But can I just encourage somebody here today? I don't care what society tried to call you or try to label you. Come on, Jesus has called you something different. Come on, you are a chosen people. You are royal priesthood. Come on, he loves you unconditionally. Come on, you are not who they say you are. It's very important that you know that. Because it's easy to get into a label. It's easy. Even family members can do that. When they see you in a moment of despair, of depravity, they'll look at you and label you. That's how they did Jesus. Oh, that's just Jesus, the Nazarene. He's the son of the carpenter. But little did he know he was a healer too. He was a deliverer. Come on, somebody. Because people can often label you based on your situation. And I think that's important for us to know. But Bartimaeus... Somebody say Bartimaeus. He put
pushes the boundary of this identity by crying out to Jesus. And watch what he cries out. He says, Jesus, son of David. Mark chapter 10, verse 47. Watch, 47. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The first point I want to make to you today is shout based on your revelation, not your situation. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 you need to understand that this man could not see Jesus, but he heard that he was in the vicinity. He heard them saying Jesus was here. He's heard that he was in the room. He heard that he was close in proximity, even though he couldn't see him. So he calls out, but watch, he says, son of David. This is very significant because the son of David, when he declared that, he was basically saying Jesus is the Messiah. And the only other time Jesus heard that is when Peter, remember he got the revelation when Jesus was saying, who the men said that I am? And then Jesus said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus said, flesh and blood didn't reveal that. You got a revelation that the other folks don't got. Come on, isn't it interesting that you could be in the same crowd but have a different revelation? You could be in the same church and have a different revelation. Come on. And this is what God is trying to say. Don't shout based off of your situation. Shout off a revelation on who you know Jesus is. And when he shouted the Messiah... He was making a declaration what other people wasn't. They've been around Jesus. They saw him he walk on water. They saw him heal the sick. Come on, they saw him raise the dead. They saw him feed 5,000 people, but didn't have a revelation. How bad it is when you come to church after service, after service, after service, and you get encounters of God and still don't even have a revelation. But look at somebody and say, not me. Come on, you better let's say that out loud. Not me. Not here at Destiny Point Church. Come on, we don't shout just based off a situation. We shout off a revelation. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got a revelation of who Jesus really is. It's very interesting, Pastor Josh, that blind Bartimaeus didn't shout after he got healed. You get that? He, he, he didn't shout after he got healed like, like most of us do. Because it's easy to shout when you get healed. It, you, you better have a praise break when you get a promotion. Come on, somebody. You better have a praise break when you get a house or a car. Come on. That's a good reason to shout. But how many of us shout before? Ooh, I wish I had a church in here. How many of us shout before we get the miracle? How many of us shout before we get the blessing? How many of us shout? And see, when you do that, you are operating in crazy faith. Because you can't see it, but you believe it. See, Pastor Josh, y'all see this now. But you wasn't there when they was over at the Hilton Garden Inn when they started, come on somebody, on a word from God. They didn't see all of y'all then. Come on, they had a word for what it was going to be. And they started shouting back then. And now they're walking into what they shouted about 10 years ago. I wish I had a church here. Look at somebody and say, I'm about to walk into what I shouted for last year. I feel the Holy Ghost on that. Holy Ghost on that. You better learn how to shout before you get it. Because if you only shout based off your situation, you ain't going to never have a praise break. But I want to make an announcement today. Jesus is in the room. As a matter of fact, Jesus is walking down your road. Jesus is passing by. And I want to ask you a question. What you going to do about it? They used to sing a song, don't wait to shout until the battle is over. Oh, I wish I had to shout right now. Look at somebody and say, I ain't waiting. Tell them, I ain't waiting to get a praise break. I'm not waiting until I sign the contract. I'm shouting before I sign the contract. 
because I got a revelation of the Jesus who can give me the contract. Ooh, take your seats. Ooh, I feel that thing in my belly. And watch this. Watch what happens when he begins to shout. Because see, when you get a revelation and you start shouting based off a revelation, not situation, you're going to always face opposition. In Mark chapter 10, verse 48, it says, many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. In, in, in modern day terms, shut up. That's what they said. Shut up. Don't bother the master. Why are you shouting to the rabbi? Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't you know who you are? You're blind. You a beggar. You ain't got no money. Why would he mess with you? <laughs> but well, let me tell you something. Blind Bartimaeus and his blind self and his begging self with no money, come on, sleeping out on a street had more of a revelation than the rabbis, than the Pharisees, than the Sadducees, because there's something about when you get a revelation of Jesus, ain't nobody going to stop my shout. You better watch out because you wasn't there when God healed me. You wasn't there when God delivered me. You wasn't there when he knocked the bottle out of my hand. You wasn't there when he knocked the crack pipe out of my Don't you let Destiny Point Church, don't you let nobody stop your shout. The church that stops shouting begins a decline. You want to know why Destiny Point Church so blessed? It's because y'all know how to shout off a revelation. You know how to shout before you get it. You know how to shout before expansion. And people can't figure it out. They trying to figure out how y'all so blessed. Just tell them I got a shout because I got a revelation. I know who he is. You ain't got to understand my shout. But one thing you ain't going to do is stop me from shouting. Come on, you may be broke, but keep shouting. You may be running two pennies together, but keep on shouting. You may not have a job, but keep on shouting. You may be sick in body, but keep on. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. I feel the power of the anointing. Somebody shout. Listen, I just heard the Holy Ghost. DPC, you need a new building, don't you? I just heard the Holy Ghost on this. I just heard the Holy Ghost say, shout now before you get it. Come on, shout before you get the new building. Shout before they come in by the thousands. Shout! Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Shout unto God, all ye people. Come on, somebody. Because you got a revelation of who Jesus is. Hey. Take your seat. Watch. I'm just on my first point. I'm trying to move quick. Mark chapter 10, verse 49. Watch what happens when you shout through the opposition. When you push through what's been pushing against you. Watch what happens. Verse number 49, something interesting happened. Jesus stopped. <laughs> and he called him. Because Jesus never stops unless he has you on his mind. He knows every hair that's on your head. He knows your address. Come on, he knows where you work. Come on, come on. God ain't forgotten about you. Some of y'all been shouting and you think God is still and forgot about you. But I came by to tell you, you keep shouting because Jesus is about to stop and call your name. 
Just look at somebody and say, you next up in line. You next. Uh Uh-huh. You need to minister to somebody and say, you next, baby. You just keep shouting because Jesus knows your name. He knows your address. He knows where you work. Come on. He knows where you drive. Jesus stops. Sit, sit. Jesus stops and he calls him by name. He says, blind man, cheer up. Get on your feet. The master is calling. My second point, shout until Jesus stops and calls your name. Listen, you may be in a bad predicament and all the odds are stacked up against you. But don't lose your praise. I don't know who I'm ministering to right now. Because I'm saying stuff I ain't saying in the first service. But I heard the Lord say, don't lose your shout. I don't care how bad your situation looks. I don't care how much the odds are stacked against you. Don't you lose your shout. It's your shout that's going to get you out. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. You need to look down your row and say, if you breathing, you should be praising. Tell them, I got a reason to praise him. I got a reason to give him glory. I got a reason to give him thanks. I got a reason. I woke up with a reason. Woo! My God. See, crazy faith makes Jesus stop and call your name. I love it when Jesus makes pit stops. Remember, he made a pit stop to a funeral and went to a graveyard of a man named Lazarus. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost coming over now. The Bible declares that when he went to the grave site, he made a pit stop at a dead situation. He made a pit stop when everybody else was walking away from the funeral. But when Jesus makes a stop, he calls your name. And the Bible declares, the Bible, the Bible declares that when he got there to Lazarus' grave, he called him by name. He said, Lazarus. You know why he did that? Because he's telling him, whatever you were labeled prior to, when I call your name, it's just been dismantled. In other words, he's changing your name from Saul to Paul, baby. He's changing your name. I don't care what you did back in the day. I don't care what you did 20, 30 years ago. When Jesus calls your name, you step into a new thing. You step into a new season. You. Who am I preaching? He says, Lazarus, come forth. In other words, he says, whatever's dead, when I show up, it comes back to life. What's been dead in your life? What's been dead in your situation? What's been dry around you? Jesus is telling you today, I'm making a pit stop. And I'm getting ready to call your name. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, not the pastor's name. Uh Uh-huh. Not not the apostle's name. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, not the prophet. Come on. Come on. Come on. He getting ready to call your name. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one that's been trying to hide from the call. The one that's been trying to hide from doing the work of the Lord. The one that's been sitting on the backside of the desert. Nobody knew your name. But when he comes with the oil, baby, I wish I had a church here. When he comes with the oil, he knows where to find you. He knows where to find you. Look at somebody and say, he knows your name. Watch. Is Jeff here? Come here, Jeff. This is my last point. We're going to make this point. I'm getting out of here. We're going to land this train. Can I get that? He's going to illustrate this part for me. He's going to be blind Bartimaeus for y'all. It's Jeff, right? Give it up for Jeff. So watch this. This is... Amen. He got a sleeping mask. Amen. (laughs) He's going to help me preach this. Now, this is a prayer shawl, but this is going to be our cloak today. Because in the text, it says something very interesting. If you go there real quick to Mark chapter 10, verse number 50. 
Watch what happens when Jesus calls blind Bartimaeus' name. Mark chapter 10, verse number 50. He says he throwed his cloak aside. And he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. Not to a denomination. Not to your most popular church. He came to Jesus. That's important because Jesus is the only one that can heal you. Jesus, now I'm, listen, I'm a good brother, but you don't need to look to me because Jesus is the healer. Come on, somebody. He said, when I be lifted up, not your denomination, not your church, come on, not your deacon board, not your mother board. He said, when I be lifted up, he will draw all men. Maybe they not come in church because you ain't lifting up Jesus. But at Destiny Point Church, you lift up Jesus. That's why y'all packed out. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Now watch. He's going to demonstrate this for me. So he shouted. He's called him son of David. He's got the revelation. And Jesus was like, man, this man got a revelation. He calling me the Messiah. I got to stop and see what he's doing. I got to stop and see what's going on. And he calls him. Watch what happens. He throws away his cloak. Why is this important? Why is this important? Because the cloak of that Bartimaeus had, it represented the cloak that had his security, his source of shelter. And this was the cloak that he used to collect alms with. The Bible, if you study out, it says that he would throw, they would throw the cloak in front of them and it would indicate to the people that they're asking for alms. So this cloak that blind Bartimaeus had, it meant everything to him. Get that in your spirit. It meant he depended on that cloak. He, he, this is how he got his money. This is how he stayed warm at night. He would wrap himself in the cloak because that's what sheltered him. He had the cloak and that was the garment that he used to his name. That's all he had. He depended on the cloak. He depended on the garment. When he would wake up, I got to make sure I got the cloak because if I don't have the cloak, I can't get no money. I can't live. I, 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 I can't get to another day without this cloak. But when Jesus, I feel the Holy Ghost, AJ. When Jesus calls his name, the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world. When Jesus calls his name, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. When Jesus calls his name, Emmanuel, God with us. When Jesus calls his name, come on, there's power in his name. Come on, there's healing in his name. There's deliverance in his name. When Jesus calls his name, blind Bartimaeus throws the cloak aside. Go ahead and throw it aside. You know why he did that? Because he was telling the world and the society, I don't need that anymore. If I can get to Jesus. Woo, I wish somebody would run around here because I feel a running spirit. I don't need that anymore. Why? Because I don't need to be dependent on the cloak when I have my total dependency on Jesus. Because if I get Jesus, I get the money. If I get Jesus, I get the house. Come on. When I get Jesus, I get everything. Matthew 6, says, seek ye the kingdom first. Why? Because then all of these other things will be added. Church, what is he telling you? Point number three, let go of every crutch and go to Jesus. Crutches are designed to keep you dependent upon it. i never forget, I, I tore my Achilles tendon. My Achilles playing basketball. I thought I was young. 
I went out there with the young boys and tore it, snapped it. The first thing they had to do, and I, because I let it heal on its own, but they put it in the boot and they gave me crutches. They said, you're going to need these because you ain't going to be able to get around without them crutches. But the more I had them crutches, the more dependent I came upon it. The more I thought I needed it. I couldn't get up and walk without it. But eventually, I had to let the crutches go. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. If you're going to ever walk again, you got to let the crutch go. You got to trust Jesus and not the crutch. You got to trust Jesus and not the cloak. Come on. Some trust in horses. Some trust in chariots. But we will put our trust in the name of the Lord. Jesus called him. Said, blind Bartimaeus, come to me. He threw the cloak off. He came to Jesus. And then Jesus asked him a question. Because when you come to him, he'll always ask you something. Because there's an exchange when you get to the cross. There's an exchange when you get to the altar. There's an exchange when you meet Jesus. Because Jesus would never let you leave what you had behind and not make an exchange and give you more than what you left. Woo, who am I preaching here today? He'll give you more than what you could ever imagine if you just trust him, church. Who am I preaching here today? I feel the Holy Ghost. If you just trust him and not the crutch. If you would just trust him and not the cloak. So when he throws it away, he comes to Jesus. Jesus asks him a question in Mark chapter 10, verse 51 and 52, and I'm closing. He says, what do you want me to do for you? Can't you hear him asking you that question today? Destiny Point Church, he's asking you, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? What is it that you need? What is it that you need? And watch what he says. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. He gave him specific what he wanted because see, crazy faith is specific. You have to know what you want. When you call upon him, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after. He tells him, I want to see. In verse 52, Jesus says, go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. And immediately, somebody shout immediately. Look at somebody say, it ain't going to take a long time. Oh, no, 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 no. It ain't going to take 10 to 20, 30 years. Come on. When you have an encounter with Jesus, it happens immediately. And whatever has been delayed, he will catch you back up and he will restore the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the locust has devoured in your life if you would just trust him. So watch. He says this and I'm, I'm done. He says, Go. Your faith has made you whole. And immediately his sight came. Boop. He's healed. He's healed because of crazy faith. But watch. When he had an encounter with Jesus, watch what the text says. And I'm done. But don't miss this final part. Because anytime you get an encounter with Jesus, he heals your body. Come on, he delivers your family. He saves your children. Come on. He gives you a promotion at your job. Come on, somebody. You don't leave Jesus. So blind brother mess, he said, go. Oh, no, 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 no. I ain't going nowhere. The Bible says that he followed Jesus. Oh, him says, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. When you really get an encounter with Jesus, you will follow him wherever he goes. Because if any man come after me, let him deny himself 
and follow me. And he says, I'm going wherever you're going, Jesus. Oh, you can heal me like that that quick? I'm going wherever you're going. You can deliver me like that? I'm going wherever you're going. You can save my children like that? Oh, I'm going where you're going. In other words, he's saying, I'm going to be a disciple. Come on, because disciples follow Jesus. I'm not a churchgoer no more. I'm a disciple. I'm going to follow Jesus wherever he goes. Is there anybody in here that's ever had an encounter with Jesus to where you say, I'm going to follow you wherever you go, Jesus? Everybody else may be following everything else, but I'm following Jesus. Why is this is important? Why is this important? Because I believe that the reason why Mark named him in the Bible, because if you read in Matthew 20, there's a lot of different accounts of this story. In Matthew chapter 20, it talks about two blind men that got healed, but it never named the name. Luke talked about the one blind man, never named the name, but Mark, the gospel of Mark, the mark of action. Come on, immediately, suddenly, you hear all those words in Mark. He denotes the name. He gives the name. You know why I believe he did that? It's because Bartimaeus Followed Jesus and became the last disciple before he went to the cross. Because let me tell you something. Real crazy faith will always leave a legacy behind. It will always leave a legacy when you take a jump. When you go after God and you have the encounter with Jesus. You will always leave a legacy. You want to leave a legacy for your children and your children's children? Have crazy faith. Now lift those hands all over this room. I'm done. You can play softly. The Spirit of God is in this place. Many of you are in this room, and you're saying, Pastor, you've been talking to me the whole time. I'm that blind Bartimaeus that you've been talking about. I've been labeled by society. I've been labeled by my family. I've been labeled by my friends and I formed an identity based off of what they call me. But I'm going to have crazy faith today and I'm going to go after the one that can change my name, that can change the labels. Today in this place, I feel it by the Holy Ghost. Jesus is calling you. Oh, yeah. yeah you, remember I told you this is a setup. You've been set up by God to be in this place at this time, because the steps of a good man are ordered the Lord, there's no coincidences in the kingdom of God. You are here today so that you can know that Jesus is calling your name. He has made a pit stop today at Destiny Point Church just so that he can come after you. And if you're in this place, and I want every head bowed, every eyes closed. If you're in this place and you would say, Pastor, you're talking to me. I have never followed Jesus. I have never said yes to Jesus. I have never invited him into my heart. Can I tell you something today, my brother and my sister? Today is your day. Today is your day. Come on. God is not mad at you. Whoever told you that is wrong. God is not mad at you. He is a God of love. He is a God of compassion. Even when he's moving in another direction, he's willing to stop your way just so that he can hear what you got to say. And today, Jesus is here in Destiny Point Church because he made a stop today to call your name. It's time to come home. Uh-huh, you've been gone too long. It's time to come home. Amen. Jesus is calling your name today. Today is the day of salvation, says the Spirit of God. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow is not promised to you. Life is only but a vapor. Listen, people are dying by the seconds. By the seconds. And nobody knows the day of the hour when the Son of Man shall come. But there are signs that's happening. The signs of the times are here. That solar eclipse that happened, that was a prophetic sign in the sky. Because the Bible says in Luke chapter 21, verse number 25, it talks all the way down. If you read it, it says to look up when you see these signs because your redemption draws nigh. Jesus is on his way back, church. Jesus is on his way back. But guess what? He's not leaving without you. 
I don't care how bad your situation been. I don't care if you've been locked up. I don't care if you're an alcoholic. I don't care if you've been shooting up on crack or cocaine. I don't care if you're homeless. I don't care if you're a doctor or a lawyer. Listen, at the cross, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter how much money you got. It doesn't matter how much money you don't got. We're all equal at the cross. At the cross. At the cross where I first saw the light. The bird is of my heart. They rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight. And now I'm happy all day. Somebody's about to receive their sight right now. You've been blind spiritually, but you're about to get your sight back. When I count the three all over this room, I feel the anointing very strong. Whew, I feel the anointing very strong. We're about to erupt in here, I'm telling you, because people are getting ready to make a decision to come home to Jesus. They're saying yes to Jesus and no to the devil. They're saying, I can't wait another day. Come on, my life has been on hold. My life has been on delay. But the missing element was Jesus. I've tried everything else. I've tried to wear the cloak and the garment as long as I could. But I am throwing that aside today. On April the 14th is my day where Jesus is about to get my sight back. When I count the three, I want you to lift that hand all over this room if you want to say yes to Jesus and no to the devil. One, two, three. Do it now. Lift those hands up. There are hands all over this room. There are hands all over this room. There are hands all over this room. Come on. That's it. That's it. Don't you be ashamed. Come on. Jesus died publicly. He didn't die hidden. Come on, somebody. He was crucified on the old record cross publicly. Why? Because he made a public shame so you don't have to be shamed. He made a public display so you don't have to be shamed. He made a public... Listen, if you got that hand up, I want you to say, excuse me. Touch that name and say, excuse me. I'm making my way to the altar. And when I count to three, I want you to come to this altar. We're going to pray with you. We're going to celebrate you. One, two, three. Do it now. Come on. Come on. Get out of that aisle. Come on out that way and say, excuse me, honey. Excuse me, baby. This is my day of destiny. Come on. They're coming. Come on. Come on. Come on. You're receiving your sight today. Come on. Come to the altar. Come on. Come on, come on, that's it, that's it, that's it. Come on, they're coming, keep clapping. They're coming all the way from the back. Come on, come from the overflow. Jesus is calling you today. Come on, he's changing your name. He's changing your name. You will never be the same after today. I don't care what your friends have labeled you. I don't care what your family has labeled you. I don't care what society has labeled you. Jesus is changing your name today. You are going to be free in Jesus. And you're going to walk in the newness of life. Come on, they're still coming. Come on, clap those hands as they come. Come on, let's lift it up. That's it. And I never. That's it. Come on, they're still coming. Come on, there's room at the cross. We got time. Come on. There's room at the cross. Come on. You have rescued my life. Come on, church, sing that. You have, you have rescued my life. And I'm never, never go. go. Oh, you have, you have rescued my life. Oh, you have rescued my life. And I never. Going back. Oh. Listen. Listen. I just heard the Lord say, make a second call. Make a second call. Listen. Listen. They're still coming. They're still coming. Come on. You should be clapping, church. They're still coming. They're still coming. Man, I feel the anointing in this place. Listen to me. Maybe you have said yes, yes to Jesus before, but you have backslidden. I heard the Lord say, to make a call to the backslidden, to make a call to the one that need to rededicate their life back to God. When I count to three, I don't want you to wait or delay. Today is your day. I want you to come and stand behind these that are at the altar. One, two, three. Do it now. If you want to rededicate your life back to God, it's been on hold. It's been on pause. Come on. They're coming. Come on. I see you. Come on. Come on. They're coming. Come on. Stand behind them. Get them up close. Can we bring them up closer? Bring them up closer. Get on behind them. Come on. They're coming from out everywhere. Come on. Rescue them. Come on, church. And I never. That's it. I see you. 
I see you. I see you. Come on. Come on. That's right. He's changing your name. You have rescued my life. Oh. oh, oh. And I never. Come on, church. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit in this place. Come on. Let's worship him. You have. You, 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 you. And I never, I never. Listen, listen. Today, you would never be the same, says the Spirit of God. If you are in this room today, Jesus has your name on his mind. And he has not forgotten you. This is the last call. There's somebody in this room, you've been feeling forgotten. It's like, it's like you've been feeling like you've been looked over, like you've been passed over, and it's like you've been on delay. When I count to three, I want you to make your way out of the aisle, and I want you to come and get behind these people because the Spirit of God is moving at this altar. One, two, three. Do it now. They're already coming. Come on. Come on. Come on. They're already coming. Come on. Come on. You ain't forgotten, baby. Listen, you ain't forgotten. Jesus loves you. He loves you. Come on. He loves you unconditionally. Come on, church. Come on. You have, you have. Father, bless this man. Bless him, God. Bless him, God. Bless him, God. You have. And I never. Lift it up, lift it up, you have. They still coming. Come on, they're coming. Come on. Come on, they're still coming. There's room. Come on. Yes. You ain't forgotten. You ain't forgotten. You ain't forgotten. Come on, you're special to God. You're special to God. Yeah. Come on, one more time. You have rescued my life. Now every hand lifted, those are in the room, those at the altar, lift those hands. If you are here for salvation, I want you to pray this prayer out loud. Look at these tears. These are tears of joy. These are tears of joy. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Can I just tell you something prophetically? Your season just shifted. I'm telling you prophetically what I know by the Holy Ghost. You've been in a season of hold. You've been in a season of delay. You've been in the sea of depravity. But I hear the Lord saying, your season just shifted. You're in a new season. Today is a season of joy. It's a season of peace. It's a season of love. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Listen, if you're here and you want to give that salvation call and you're saying, man, I was that blind Bartimaeus. I felt like Jesus didn't love me. I felt like he gave up on me. He's talking to you. He's talking to you too. He loves you. He loves you unconditionally. He hasn't forgot about you. I wish I could get to everybody because the prophetic is coming on me now, but I want to just say this out loud. I want us to say this out loud in concert. I want us to say the sinner's prayer out loud. I believe that Jesus is going to set you free when we declare this out of our mouth. Can we do this together as a big family? Say, Lord Jesus. Come on, shout out loud. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I repent and I turn away from my wicked ways. Say, I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. And I know today that I am saved. I've been set free. Now say this with power. Say Satan. Shout it out. Satan. Say Lucifer. Devil. Every demonic spirit. Every witchcraft spirit. It's broken now. It's broken. It's broken. You are free. 
You are free. You are free. You ought to shout right now. You have you. This morning, can we give the Lord a huge hand clap of praise today? I love what Pastor Liddell said earlier. He says, sometimes your shout will get you out. And you know what? Pastor Liddell has no idea. Last week, we preached about praise, didn't we? And how praise can bring breakthrough in our life. What an incredible word today, amen? We've got revelation over our situation. And what that means is no matter what's going on around me, I already know that God's going to work it out for my good because I got the revelation of his truth, amen? One more time, lift your hands to heaven. Father, we thank you for the word that was dropped in our heart today in our spirit we receive that word revelation is light and light causes the darkness to run away and revelation has come to our heart today and some darkness that the enemy has tried to bring upon us has to run because we have seen the light we have received the word we call on your name we will shout even before we even see it happen. We're going to go ahead and give you a praise, Lord, before the miracle even takes place because the miracle will take place. So we're going to go ahead and give you a praise ahead of time. We have made up our mind, like Pastor Liddell was preaching, that we are going to follow you all the way through, Father. We're going to follow you. And we thank you for what you did in our hearts and our lives today. In Jesus' name. Can we let Pastor Liddell know how much we love him and appreciate him? Amen. How many, how many would love for Pastor Liddell to come back and maybe, pre maybe preach to us a whole weekend sometime? Amen. Incredible. I want you to make your way back to your seat real quickly. Remain standing. We're, we're going to dismiss and let you out of here in just a moment. If you're a guest for the first time, man, Jennifer and I and our team, we would love to greet you. So make sure you stop by the VIP lounge on your way out. Also, I know Pastor Liddell, Miss Tanya, they got some product out there, their shirts and, and, and their, their album and all those good things, man. Make sure that you greet them, shake their hand, tell them thank you for being with us today. Now, listen, I want to do something. We don't always do this every service. You know this. Um, but when we have a guest come in, especially like Pastor Liddell, who has absolutely blessed our life, he left his church this weekend to come be with us. And I know that's a big step and sacrifice to do that. On your way out today, I want to bless him with an offering. Amen? Is it all right? Whatever the Lord puts in your heart, we're not trying to trick you, manipulate you in, into your wallet. But I believe with all my heart that if we bless the man and woman of God, that the Lord will absolutely bless us as well. Amen. It's just a token of thank you and blessing to them. So today on your way out, we're going to dismiss in just a moment. Uh, Steve is going to have the offering buckets right up here in the front. So when we dismiss in a moment, just make your way. Put your offering right here and then consider yourself dismissed. You can also give online if that's a little easier for you. Just make sure in the notes that you 
put Pastor Liddell, if, if you just put that, we will make sure that he gets every penny uh, that we want to bless him with today. How many's going to help me this morning? Amen. So, Father, we thank you for what you did in our hearts and our lives today. We thank you for this service. We pray blessings over Pastor Liddell, Pastor Tanya, over their four children, over their wonderful church in Tampa, Florida. Bless them abundantly. Lord, thank you for allowing them to come to minister to DPC today and bless this offering that we're going to bless them with this morning in Jesus mighty name amen amen have an incredible day we love you with all of our hearts